Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 12.1, Measurement Benchmarks. Our essential question for this lesson is, how can you use benchmarks to understand the relative size of measurement units? Please open up your Go Math book to page 222, and we'll begin. Now, first we have to know what a benchmark really is. A benchmark is something that you would use in everyday life that would help you estimate the actual size of that particular unit of measurement. So let's take a look at our customary units of length. Look at this picture of about an inch. Look at your finger, and if you look at your fingertip down to about the first knuckle, you can just say that that's about an inch. Now a foot is about the length of a license plate. Also a foot is a, the length of a ruler. Now let's look over at a yard. If you've ever swung a baseball bat, you know how long that is. Well, you can say, well, that's about a yard, the length of a yard. And then finally, a mile. What is a mile? Well, if you've ever walked consecutively for 20 minutes without stopping, that would be about the length of a mile. You could walk about a mile in 20 minutes. Now let's talk about customary units of weight. The weight of an ounce is approximately a few colored pencils. You can also consider an ounce to be the weight of possibly one slice of bread. But a pound is about the weight of a whole loaf of bread. I like to also think of a pound as the weight of a tennis shoe. But a ton is very heavy. A ton is about the weight of a car, other people say it could be about the weight of an elephant. And last, we're going to talk about customary units of liquid volume. That's when you pour liquid into a container. The five different customary units that we're going to talk about and explore today is going to be the cup. A cup actually is eight fluid ounces. And a cup, well, if you've ever drank out of a glass, that's about the, the measurement of a cup. Now, a pint is a little bit bigger than a cup. In fact, two cups will equal one pint. And in this example, there's like a little small milk carton. It's a little bit bigger than the ones that you use in the cafeteria though. It's about the two sizes of the cafeteria cartons. Now let's take a look at the quart. A quart is in between a pint and a half gallon. Four quarts is going to equal a gallon, if you can imagine that. And last, we're going to talk about the half gallon before we talk about the gallon. A half gallon just means you can fit two of these inside one gallon. And a larger milk container would be the example of a half gallon. And then finally, a gallon is like a gallon of milk that you always get at the store. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at questions 1 through 4 in your Go Math book. I want you to look at that right now on page 222. And I want you to look at these four different things. Now, one is done for you. The height of a computer. Now you're talking about length in this example because you wouldn't weigh the height of a computer or you wouldn't use it for liquid volume. So in this case, you're going to be looking at customary units of length. So what would be the approximate height of a computer? Would it be, would you measure it in inches? A foot? Would it be about a yard? Or would it be a mile? In this example, the height of a computer is about a foot. So now I want you to answer questions two, three, and four on your own using these examples of customary units. Pay close attention to your pictures up top to help guide you. Go ahead and pause the video, try them on your own, and we'll check them together. Press pause now. Okay, for your examples, I would have probably said that a pound would be the best thing to weigh a table. The length of a semi-truck, you would actually probably use yards for that. That would be the most customary unit that you should use. The last one that you should use for the amount of a liquid in a bathtub that it holds, you would measure that in gallons. I hope you got those three right. Now let's go on. Next we're going to use the metric system. Now the metric system is used in other countries, but sometimes we use it here in America. In America, though, we mostly use the customary units of measurement. However, today we're going to talk about the metric units of length. 
and the metric units of mass and the metric units of liquid volume. Now, the millimeter is very, very tiny. If you look on a ruler on the centimeter sides, the, it has many centimeters on one side. Well, if you look inside between two centimeters, you're going to see little tiny lines. And there's actually 10 of those inside of the centimeter. So one of those teeny little pieces, one of those little lines right there, would be considered a millimeter from one to another. Now the centimeter is about the width of a finger. So look at your finger and just say that's about a centimeter. And you can prove that by pulling out a ruler if you have one at home and putting your fingertip up at a ruler on the centimeter side and your fingertip is about the width of a centimeter. Now a decimeter is about the width of your hand. It takes 10 centimeters to make a decimeter. The last two I'm going to talk about are the meter and the kilometer. Now a meter is about the width of a door. The width of a door. All right. Very similar to a yardstick in our customary unit of measurement. And last we're going to talk about the kilometer and you can walk a kilometer in about 10 minutes. So that tells me that a kilometer is about a half of a mile. Now let's move on to metric units of mass. A mass in metric units we only measure in two different types of measurement, the gram and the kilogram. Now a gram is about the weight of a dollar. Some people also say a gram is about the weight of a paper clip. A kilogram is about the weight of a baseball bat. Now remember, we're not talking about length, we're talking about the weight. So if you've ever picked up a baseball bat and felt it, that's about a kilogram. Now kilo, that word right there, actually means 1,000. It takes about 1,000 grams to equal a kilogram. Therefore, it would take about $1,000 bills to equal the weight of a baseball bat. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the metric system of liquid volume milliliter. Now the milliliter is when you drop it with a medicine dropper and if you've looked in your medicine droppers, most medicine droppers have like 5 milliliters or 10 milliliters. So you would actually measure your units of liquid volume in the metric system using milliliters and that is very a very small amount and again if you've ever looked at your medicine droppers it takes about 5 milliliters to fill it up. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the liter. Now, a liter is just like one of those jugs that you would get like full of juice at the store, like a Gatorade or a Juicy Juice container. Well, that would be a liter. All right, so now what we're going to do is I want you to look at question 5, 6, 7, and 8. The mass of a grasshopper. So you're going to look in the mass. Which of these two would you want to measure the weight of the, or the mass of a grasshopper? Number six, the amount of liquid a water bottle holds. All right, the amount of liquid a water bottle holds. Would you use that with milliliters or liters? Next, the length of a soccer field. What would you use up here? Because we're talking about length of a soccer field. Again, look at these examples over here as well. They're the same thing. And last, the length of a pencil. What would be that you would use to measure the length of your pencil? All right, go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. Okay, for these four, I would have probably said that you would measure the mass of a grasshopper with grams. The amount of liquid a water bottle holds would be measured in liters. The length of a soccer field, you would measure that in meters because there's no way I'd get out there and measure a soccer field in millimeters or centimeters or decimeters. So a meter is the better choice. And last but not least, the length of a pencil. You should have said either centimeter or a decimeter. Either one of those I would accept. I hope you did well on those four. Now let's try some more. So knowing what you've learned so far about customary units of measurement or about metric units of measurement, what would you find to be the best choice? I want you to circle the better estimate. Go ahead and pause the video for 9, 10, and 11. Try these three using what you learned so far, and let's see if you're right.
Okay, for these three, you should have said the mass of a chicken egg is 50 grams. There's no way it could be 50 kilograms because we knew that a kilogram, one of them, equals about the weight of a baseball bat. Next, I want you to think about the length of a car. 12 miles or 12 feet? Well, there's no way a car could be 12 miles, so 12 feet is a better choice. And for number 11, amount of liquid in a drinking glass that it holds, you should have said 8 ounces. Because remember, on our little chart, it said 8 ounces equals 1 cup. Let's try some more. Okay, let's look at 12 and 13 in your book. Go ahead and pause this video. Try to answer your two on your own based on what you've learned so far. And then press unpause and we'll see if we match. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, for these two, you should have said that they both were more. A camera has the length of more than one centimeter because remember, we learned our benchmark is about one centimeter is about the width of your finger. So obviously, a camera is more than just the width of your finger. On number 13, a bowling ball weighs more than one pound? Absolutely. If you've ever gone to the bowling alley to pick up a bowling ball, it's pretty heavy. And a pound weighs about the weight of one loaf of bread. Well, bowling balls are a lot heavier than that. Okay, let's keep going. Let's take a look at our two problem solving questions. Number 14, what is the better estimate for the mass of a textbook? Would it be one gram or one kilogram? And number 15, what is the better estimate for the height of a desk? Would it be about one meter or one kilometer? Remember, if you can't remember what these benchmarks look like, you can always rewind the video to those pages and take a look at what our benchmark estimates were. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. Then press play when you're ready. Okay, for these two, you should have said that the mass of a textbook is about one kilogram. Because remember, one gram is about the mass of um, a paper clip or a dollar bill. Now, the better estimate for the height of a desk, is it a meter or a kilometer? You should have said meter because remember, a kilometer was about the length of about a half of a mile. All right, let's move on. Okay, so the homework questions that we're going to check tomorrow morning in class are going to be questions one and two on the back side of your GoMath page. So it'll be on page 223. Go ahead and look at questions one and two. You may refer back to the slides that you've already watched if you can't remember the exact benchmarks that we discussed today. Also, go ahead and answer the review questions from the other lessons that are also on page 223. They're questions three through six. You know how to do all four of those because we've taught them already in class. And somewhere on your GoMath page, how about in the very top corner on the right? I want you to assess yourself level one novice, level two apprentice, level three practitioner, or level four the expert, based on the benchmarks that you've learned today. And remember, tomorrow in class, we're gonna be exploring using these benchmarks and estimates that you will be fine if you don't feel ready yet. We are gonna practice it a lot tomorrow. Okay, go ahead and work on those homework questions. Here they are again. And as you work on these, make sure you refer back to the pages if you need to, if you aren't sure. And we'll check them in the morning. Have a great night.